Um, by the name Serge Twajirimana, um, from the Rwanda Bible Society. Yeah, and I'm here for the Young Samaritan program. Okay. okay. It's a pleasure to have you, Mr. Serge. I'm with my one and only sister. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm by the names of Ms. Tonya, and I'm an S3 student of our Authentic International Academy. Okay, Tonya, wow. Uh, my brother, how are you? I'm good. I'm okay. Let me to introduce myself. My name is Shimon Dizzy I'm a student of Authentic International Academy. It's a pleasure for me to be on this show. Okay, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, my sister, can you introduce yourself? Good evening. I'm Kam Kazi Ameli from Authentic International Academy. Wow. Uh, a warm welcome to this beautiful student from Authentic International Academy, uh, a Christian school here in Rwanda, uh, the one among the best top schools here in Rwanda. Oh, Mr. Serge, oh, can you tell us about Young Samaritan program? Um, as uh, I said earlier, I'm from the Bible Society of Rwanda. And uh, recently on the 29th December, we launched uh, a program named Young Samaritan. It's a program we hope to uh, use uh, to help a number of youths ranging, uh, I can say young people, teenagers and youth, uh, aging 12 to 24. And um, this program is uh, specifically to help them uh, uh, meet their challenges in life. You know, sometimes we, we are so silent on them. Yes. We want them to give us a platform we want them to listen to us, you know, as instructors, as parents. We always want these young people to listen, but we forget that they also need a platform. We forget that they have a speech. So the program is to help them come out, you see, come out in this world that in the era where we have very many difficulties, but then we want them to speak out. It could be easier for us to help them when we know what they are thinking, isn't it? But still, in Rwanda, generally, we need a group of young men and women that can take decisions on their own. So um, this uh, program has a set of uh, objectives, and um, we have a number of them, but I'll go through them yes, faster. Uh, one of them is uh, to help uh, young people to plan for their future. We want to show them the way, you see, we want to tell them that the world is an open space. They have to move freely. Second is to give actual information about uh, puberty changes. Uh, yeah, Some of them, <coughs> some parents make it a secret. And uh, the era we are in now, it's not about making it a secret. These young people have, are accessing internet. Uh, they are accessing platforms, social medias, and sometimes if the information they are getting is not well explained, they dive into it wrongly. So that's one of the reasons as to why we have this um, program, program yes. in the Bible Society. Third, we are to encourage young people to make healthy decisions and avoid negative influence. You see, um, at my age, at their age, I, I didn't know how to use social media. These people are now no uh, musicians outside, more than I know, more than you know. Uh, they have actually more information, more than you know, more than I know, but information is not bad. But now here we're talking about how they apply the information they get. We, the program is to teach them and help them make better and clear decisions. There is a saying in Kinyarwanda that goes that Turiba Tuari Konango Turi Jito. So we don't want our young men and women to be young even in the mind. You see, they can be young in age, but mature enough to make decisions. Okay. Fourth is to 
equip local partners and uh, duty bearers to support and contribute to the positive, inclusive development of young people. This program is going to be, um, as I said earlier, we launched it on the 29th. It's a program that is bigger itself than we see it, you see? You see, when we are talking about young people, we are talking about a future generation. We are talking about future mothers, future presidents and ministers. So we are taking it to schools. Why not pastors and apostles? Uh, pastors and apostles, oh, okay. amen. Yeah, we are taking it to many places. This is one of the places, one of the platforms. So they were on TV. We are being watched by a number of okay. their agents. So we are taking it to many places. And uh, in this program, we are specifically going to concentrate on 11 to 10 things. I'll pass through them very fast. One, it's on uh, my road now. But then we add something. My road now what? You see? If I could put it in Kinyarwanda, in Zidayanje, we want them to decide to prepare this journey of life, yeah. to understand they are on a journey and go through it successfully. You see? Second, it is I'm somebody special. We are all created in a good way, isn't it? In the image of God. And we are special in different ways. So we want this, uh, this young generation not to feel big or small because of what they are, but to feel that whatever way they are created, it's their speciality. Third, we have um, one that goes me and my surrounding. You know, normally when you tell them their surrounding, they think about trees, about houses, but we want to go further than this. Uh, among what surrounds them, they have friends. We have bad behaviors. We have bars, we have churches, we have hospitals. So we want them to know what surrounds them and how to apply and how to work with the environment, how to interact with the environment in a healthy way. Uh, fourth, um, I take care of my body and my environment. These are young people, right? That they need to learn about their hygiene, about even the, even the Cleanness of the environment. Yes. We always think clean Rwanda, clean Rwanda. But trust me, this legacy could be lost if we don't um, plant it in these young men and women. So that's one of the things. Fifth, uh, we have, I want to fight against HIV and AIDS. Allow me to repeat it. I want to fight HIV and AIDS. Some people have a misconception that it no longer exists. It might be hiding somewhere. And trust me, the worst thing is the one that is hiding. But we want to remind these young men and women that HIV and AIDS is still there. And it's also their duty to fight it. You see? Yes. They don't need to make 18 to make decisions. At least not in Rwanda. Our young men and women don't need to make 18 to take good decisions. It's the right time we start teaching them that. Sixth, it's friendship. Here we are um, not only talking about friendship, but healthy friendship. We want these young women and men to learn how to make good friends. You see? How to interact with their friends. What to consider when choosing friends. And this is not something we want to teach them. We want to hear it from them. It's young Samaritan. We want them to, it's an interaction between young people. Uh, seventh, uh, peer pressure. You see, some of us, we grew up without, we were not even allowed to go out. But then we are growing up in, these young men and women are growing up in the world that is free. You see, they are exposed to many things. You see, so we want them to know about peer pressure. However much the peer pressure is there, there is that pressure that is pushing you to do something. But again, how far can you make your decisions in that peer pressure you are facing with that 
force around you of the agements of your elders, of parents, of family. But then you remember that there is you as a young person that has to make a decision. Eighth, my body is growing. Uh, some of them are so surprised when one morning they wake up and their voice has grown big and they might even tend to go to the hospital <laughs> to check for cough. <laughs> but uh, we want to teach them, we want them to know that they are growing, you see. At least I know that they know at one moment they were growing and they, they, they were struggling to walk and today they can walk. And at one moment they were in P1, primary one, and then primary two, then primary three. Here we, we are with the students, they will tell us the classes, but they have grown over time. Number nine, sexuality and love. See, that's a topic sometimes we, um, we don't discuss with them, but trust me, they know about it. And they need to talk about it. We need to hear their ideas. We need to know what they think about it. And where they go wrong, we help them come back to the right point. Then uh, number 10, content of the film. Uh, we have a, a movie. It's good news that we brought it in the studio. So to the people watching, we are going to see it. It's a very good movie. It's of uh, Miriam and Sam. I, young generation, it will define actually everything. That's why I don't want to explain. The movie will explain more. Because I know the generation we have is more of audiovisual than any other thing. Yeah, Social sure. media, they love videos and photos. Once things are not moving, trust me, you don't have what to convince them with. There is a slogan they have, na photo. Na chawai. Na chawai. So we need them to see that picture. We need them to see that video. And trust me, it's going to help them understand it more. We shall elaborate more after the movie. Then. Um, the last topic we are going to focus on is uh, communication between teenagers and teenagers, youths, and their parents. It's very normal. I passed through it. I'm sure you passed through it. Someone outside who is a bit aged passed through it. There is that time we have battles with parents, especially when we are growing. But then we want a generation that is understanding, a generation that can lay down a topic on the dining table and be like, Dad, Mom, I think it this way. And I want, you know, parents are like, wow. So yes, I, we also think it this way. And let there be a decision. We don't want a silent um, generation because silence kills. OK. Yes. Thank you. That's, uh, thank that's you. A good and rich explanation. Can you clap for him, please? Ah. <laughs> oh, sorry. You have a mic in your hands. Hey. Oh. Your parents know that you are live on Isiwa TV? Yes, thank you. Okay, say something to them, please. <laughs> uh, hey, Ma, uh, watch me well. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gayel, uh, your mom and dad knows that you are on TV live? Yes. Okay, say something to them. We're going to have fun. <laughs> He's very serious. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun. <laughs> Ameri, uh, do your parents know that you're live on TV? Yes. Okay, say something, please. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we watch a movie? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, uh, Mr. Facilitator, uh, can we watch a movie? Yeah, sure. To be the okay. best to explain it. Okay, thank you. Let's go. Let's watch a movie, then we come back after. Hurry up, you tortoise! Cut it out, friend. Can't you see his heart? Shut up, son. I'm the boss here. Besides, that idiot is my brother. <laughs> uh, now, let's find a place to relax and eat.
Hi, honey. Hi. How was your day? Ugh, I'm so tired. It's this project. It's a lot of work. You know, our own vegetable garden is enough work. I don't even think we need to add another plot for the project. What did I say? I know, I know. But you know, it's a necessary part of the additional study. A practical study project. You know, I like to work practically, not just books and writing. But that's a lot of work. I know, I know. Oh, baby, how was your day at school? It was good, Hannah. I'm always encouraged seeing kids have dreams and plans for the future. Even those who come from the slums. Well, I hope they are not disappointed. What kind of noise is that? Hi, Diana. That has to be Miriam. I did tell her she could do the music after her homework. So that was the deal. This was not the agreement, young lady. Homework and then music. Why can't they do it in the order I want? Oh. This is just another example. I have to do everything while she just does what she wants. Okay, okay, listen. Finish up your homework and go take over from Diana in the kitchen. You heard me. No more music. Everything I do is wrong. You only love Diana, the golden child. I'm not allowed to do anything. You treat me like a child. You don't even love me. Miriam. Miriam! Miriam, come back! Uh, let her have time to herself so she can calm down. She will not go far. What a spoiled child. Jeez. <laughs> you obviously have bad memory. You behaved exactly like that at that age. Me? I certainly did not act like that. Well, maybe not exactly like that, but you did have your ways of coping with puberty. You know, there's a lot going on in her body at Miriam's age. And then she has to deal with parents who have new roles in her life. It's not easy. You have to be strict, but then also try to be understanding. But mom, you are way stricter with me. Well, maybe we had our reasons. <sighs> hmm. Noah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Well, yesterday was our six month anniversary. But don't tell dad. You know, dad wants the very best for his daughters. No one will ruin anything for his two girls. But he should probably remember when, you know, he himself was that age. I, I, I know. Cars and gadgets. But look at us. Still a bunch of slum boys. Trumbo, shut your mouth. We are tired of this. You ungrateful nonsense. If it wasn't for me, you're a big brother. Take it easy. I have a plan. And this is an important part of the plan. Now, I cannot reveal much, but the problem is that the charger is damaged and I need a new one. So this is today's mission. So listen carefully. Sam, you know the shop that sells mobile phones and electronics at the corner? You will go there and you'll get me a charger that fits this one. You want me to steal it now? Mm-hmm. I will stand at the corner and you'll throw the charger to me. So just in case you search, they'll find nothing. Come on. Why don't I get such tasks? Look, Fred, I don't know. It's the middle of the day. I've done this several times and it's always gone well. Fred, this is suicide. You can do this, Sam. You're smart. I'll be caught. 
just make sure you get me the right charger for this phone. Fred. And if anything goes wrong, just rush to the space with the pool table. Or if you don't want to be part of the gang anymore then. Hi, Mary. You look a little sad. Has the world been unkind to you? Everyone is mad at me. Nobody loves me. Is that so? <laughs> See, one of the joys of having this little shop is meeting so many people. You won't believe how many stories I hear in a day. Some are sad because they have lost a friend. Some are happy because they have got a small job. Others are happy because they have somebody who cares about them. And some people are completely alone in life. You have a family, Miriam. A father and a mother who care about you. Care? Care just to tell me everything I can and can't do. They treat me like a kid. A kid? <laughs> and you are... so happy with what you do. See, when I got this little place, it was to make time go by, something to do after very many busy years in the city. It's a nice place to meet people like you. I have everything that I need. Furthermore, you know, when you have a lot of money, you have more concerns. Look over there. You can think of all that could go wrong when you're doing so great. I am happy where I am. And right now I have a little friend seated here next to me. Thank you. Get him! What's happening? We'll get him! Did you see that? That boy just stole something. I hope they get him. If they do, they'll kill him. But he's a thief. He may be a thief. And maybe he's stolen something. We don't know the background story. God loves all his people, even if they do something wrong. Why is the boy stealing? Maybe that's the only way he can survive. You say no one cares about you. Who do you think cares about that boy? I think I'll sit here with you for a while. You're most welcome. What an idiot. That fool didn't get the charger now. He has a whole town chasing after him. Hey, let's leave. 
Maybe it was your plan that was wrong. Weren't you supposed to hide behind and get the charger from Sam? And why didn't we run to the place you agreed we should meet? The place with the pool table. Chumo, shut your mouth. Frederick? 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 Miriam, don't you think it's time you... Oh, you... yes, it's getting dark. Do you think they get him? Oh, well, I hope not. Bye-bye. And think about it next time you get frustrated with your parents, if you're not better off than that boy. It's getting dark now, and Sam doesn't know about this place. Shouldn't we go and look for him? If that phone is so important to you, why can't you get a charger for yourself? Shut up. I'll find a way to get a charger for this phone. Look here. This is not just any other phone. Here I have all the contacts and links to make us all rich. Think about it. All you do is talk and talk. What's your name? I'm Sam. And what did you steal? I didn't. I was going to steal a charger. But the shopkeeper saw me. I ran but I overturned something and it broke. Wait, you have a cell phone? I did it for a friend. By the way, my name is Miriam and where were you going? I was going to my auntie. It's getting dark. She should be here by now. I just don't like it. Mm. Are you not the same person who told her to take time for herself? Anyway, she'll be back soon. We have a standing agreement. She has to be here before dark. Hmm. She's keeping that agreement for sure. It's nothing but problems with that girl. She has ten minutes. Then I'm going out to look for her. Listen. You must remember what we talked about. Girls, girls, girls. Girls are just so complicated. They're not easy to understand. If I had a son, I would know how to handle him. There, you finally said it. Your daughters mean nothing to you. You wanted sons and then you only got two girls. I, I, I didn't say that. You know I... Okay, okay, listen. Okay. Uh, Can we change the topic? Yeah? Okay. Have you noticed the stream is almost out of water? I have to go to my neighbors to fetch water too. Water my vegetable garden. And let me tell you, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's taking a toll on my back. My back is in so much pain. Like I said, we must find a solution so you can get help. Listen. And who in the world is she bringing in here? Listen, we must help him. He stole something and now there's a mob trying to kill him. Goodness, look at this girl. Now she's mingling with criminals. What's next? Please, please let us help him. Oh, sure. If you can get a hold of him. Miriam? Miriam?
Did, did she seriously mean that we should take in this thief? Well, well, such things tend to come down quickly. Anyway, Miriam is now a teenager, but very stubborn. She easily makes friends with everyone, both boys and girls. Maybe she should be warned. Maybe her sister should give her some advice. Don't go out. They're probably out there. Okay. Let me check. Did you see a small thief who ran this way? What are you looking for? A murderer? What has he done? My friends and I, we have sworn to deal with criminals. We will look for him and deal with him properly. Oh, really? Well, this might take a little longer to come down. So, I think you'll need to sleep here tonight. Then you'll go home tomorrow. Well, well, well. You will sleep here tonight. But first you need some food. Yeah, <laughs> and you also need to wash up. Him tomorrow too. It is late, Miriam. It's time to go to bed. Well, I'll think of something. Good night. Hmm. You think he's cute? What? He's a boy from the slums. So? Someone wanted to kill him. But whatever he has done, everybody would have. Well, yeah. Like you said, there's a huge gap between him and us. <laughs> this is totally different from Noah and I. Let's see what he gave me today. Can you imagine we've been together for six months? Don't you fancy boys? What's the point? I already have enough to think about. I don't need a boyfriend to take care of. What do you mean, what is the point? <laughs> it's Noah. Hello, babe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's so sweet of you. All right, all right. Tomorrow is fine by me. Okay, cheers, bye. That is the point. Hey, Miriam, where's the guy? Um, he has gone with mom to fetch some water in the neighbor as well. Dad, can he stay? No, that's totally out of question. Mom and I have talked about it. But I will take him back to his family before I go to work. But Sam has only one auntie and she can barely manage on her own. Dad, until the risk is over. Miriam, there are many who suffer everywhere around us. 
We cannot help everyone. But I've not met everyone. I know Sam and I know he needs help. Please. Just until we can be sure they won't take him and try to kill him. Do you really think you know a person only after meeting them for a few hours? Please tell him that I'll follow him home. I'm just going to fix something. Wow, well, uh, good on the listen for movie. Uh, this is a project called, or a program called Young Samaritan, initiated by Bible Society of Rwanda. I'm with my guest, uh, Mr. Serge. How was the movie? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I learned a lot. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss Tonya, how was the movie? It was very good. Yeah, and it taught a lot. Okay, do you have someone called Beth? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Gayer, how was the movie? Uh, the movie was good. It was really good. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Okay. Ameri? The movie was educative. Was educative. How? Yeah, we saw many things. Use the there. mic? Yeah, we saw many things there in the movie, which meant anything to us. Okay, do you have someone you call, babe? No. Why? <laughs> Not that time. Okay. Uh, Tonya. Yes. Uh, what is your character in the movie? You mean my favorite character? Oh, the favorite character? Yes. Yeah, it's Miriam. Miriam. Yeah. Why Miriam? Uh, because uh, she expressed herself. But, uh, like she said what she wanted to say, we should help this person. That was the first thing. And then again, she, she said what she wanted to say. Like she, she, she thought that her parents didn't love her. So she told them instead of keeping quiet and keep on thinking that way. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gayer, what is your favorite character? Well, my favorite character is Sam. Sam? Why Sam? Because Sam, Sam was influenced by his gang. And so the gang he is actually living with is not a good gang. Like, it's not a good place he should be. So the gang is influencing Sam to do wrong things in a society that doesn't allow it or support it. So he is ho sh he is hosted by this girl Miriam, who is maybe gonna teach her good manners to live in the society. So Sam is a good uh, example we can learn from to change our character. Okay. Our Thank you. What a beautiful banana and donuts. What is your favorite character in the movie, Ameri? Uh, the mom of Miriam. Why? She's a good mother, taking as we saw. She's responsible for her kids. In case there is any problem, she solves it in the family. Yeah, that's what I liked about her. She's okay. calm, kind, and understanding. Okay, thank you. Mr. Facilitator, yes. your comment, please. Um, I think uh, the movie covers it well. Well, we're not able to watch the whole of it, but maybe there will be time. But it covers the whole of it. I think uh, these young women. The question men, goes to you. What yes. is your favorite character my, my, my in favorite the movie? Character in the movie, yes. Um, the father of Miriam. The father of Miriam. Yes. Why the father? He portrayed a dad at home. A dad who has teenagers, but still, he tried to understand them at their age. Like that scene when Miriam was moving out and stopped them, was like, please, let her be. She'll come back. So he was a dad. He portrayed really what an African dad would have done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the floor is yours. Right now, I'm a student too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sit and learn. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, it's time to <laughs> interact with the young people. You know, the program is yours. 
so we, we shall say less, we need to listen from you. Uh, one, we've already said what uh, you enjoyed in the movie. What did you mainly like from the movie? Give us a picture of it. Yes, uh -huh. go on. The, the heart of Miriam. So Miriam is a kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. So this girl, she, she doesn't reject everyone. But she has a heart that always seeks to learn and always have mercy for others. So that's what I liked. And that's my message for today. Could you stand out and speak out for what you want? Would you be like Miriam? And be like, Dad, I need to help. It's not easy, but it's, it's a life process. It's a life process. Yes, I love that. And uh, that brings us to something we call communication. Isn't it? How was the communication in that family? Great. It was great. Why great? Great is a big word. Cut it down. Tell us, why is it great? So, as we saw in the movie, uh, the message, both the family, the, the gang, the, the communication was, was delivered, like, very well. Okay. So, what is communication, if I may ask? Yes, tell us. Yeah, communication is the exchange of information in a good and well-mannered way with expectation of feedbacks. Yes, so that means when we communicate, we expect a feedback, isn't it? Did we see communication in the movie? Yes. Where, exactly? Uh, we saw communication like where Miriam wanted to help Sam, but uh, the, 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 the Sam was about to get out of the house, and like he, he told, she told her father, like, would you mind looking outside to see if there are still people looking for Sam? And yeah, her father did so. That they communicated well. The message was sent, and she, she got response. the feedback. Okay, so now in that movie we see, you see people like you, of your age, isn't it? A yes or no? Yes. We are communicating. I'm not getting the feedback. Sonia yes. seems like the big sister of Miriam. <laughs> she not. was a very <laughs> okay. But the, we we are seeing people of um, of our own age. True. Yes. yes, and of different backgrounds, isn't it? Can you relate it to the normal society we are living in? Do you see people at school of different backgrounds from yours? Yes, we do. You do. Okay. Then uh, my question goes, what do you like or dislike in the way they behave and treat each other? Tell us who and what you like from the way or dislike from the way they treat each other. Maybe we, let's have a girl this time. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. What I like the most about the people in the movie I like the family, yeah. I like the family, the way they treat each other and understand each other. And what I disliked is the way in the gang, uh, the leader of the gang behaved like he's on top of others in bad behaviors, which is a, a mislead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comment? Yeah, I liked how uh, the fam the parents of Miriam and Diana, I liked how they deal with, you know, teenager issues. Yeah, not all, every case, like, deserves punishment, slaps, no. They deal with it calmly and they get to the solution, yeah. What do you think about the communication in Isaac's family? Hope you know who Isaac is. You know who is Isaac is? Yes, you know. And tell us, gentlemen, who is Isaac? So Isaac, according to the movie, Isaac is the father of Miriam and 
And I Yes. Yes. So uh, the question goes, what do you think about the communication in Isaac's family? Do they communicate well? And who had the problem and why? So, yes, communication is good. And um, in, the, uh, in Isaac's family, the communication is good, but some of them don't take the communication as it should be taken. Like, about Miriam, she sees another face of how she is treated. Like, maybe she's treated like in that way, but in that manner, but it's for another great purpose, good purpose. Mm -hmm. But for her age, she is limited. Her sight is limited to see the the goodness of her parents. And so that's why she ran to the old man to tell her uh, that she she wasn't loved. She was lonely. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. One more person. My ladies, yes, tell us. Yeah, what I liked about the Isaac's family, it's so the same, like, uh, their parents, they get some time to talk to their kids. You know, uh, many parents in nowadays, not including mine, they're not part of them, but many of them are spent... You're to be kind of uh, No, <laughs> no, they get some time for me, but actually many of them are spend most of their times, like, in their works, doing different things, but you find that they don't have enough time to talk about, to talk about family issues, to talk to their children. But in Isaac's family, they they have the time to, like, join their work and then come back and talk to their children. I like that. Uh, okay, we all have siblings. You have siblings. Yes, we do. You yes. have siblings, right? And. My last but not least says, uh, why are there sometimes tension between siblings? For example, Miriam and Diana, you saw tension. They don't sometimes agree. Diana thinks he's greater than Miriam, then Miriam thinks she's never understood. Do you ever see that one? Or in other families? Yes? Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, so why? Why do you think that? Uh, sometimes in the families you find the siblings feeling that the parent has the favorite one. She loves that one more than another one. So you find their conflicts saying, you don't understand me as much as that one. So the conflict is got there. Okay. Another thing I think, uh, there's a fairly term in Kinyarwanda that says, Maybe you have uh, an elder sibling, and maybe you, you came after him or her. Sometimes you don't understand each other. Most okay. Of the times. Okay. Mm. Let me hear from you. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the reason of this is because you know we're all we're not at the same age, so our parents know us the best. They know that this one needs to have this and this. And this one is to be stopped from doing this and this. And me who is stopped from doing something, I feel like maybe it's because she doesn't love me. And I start quarreling over, like, mom, you love this one more than I do, or saying that they love me more than they love her. And that, like, you know, brings up that case of misunderstanding. What should parents do? <laughs> you what know, do you think parents can do to have that issue? Yeah, actually, parents should mm, talk ab talk to their children and, you know, explain things to them. If, let me give an, a small example. I'm 14, my brother is 19. And my parents maybe can't afford buying the phones for the both of, both of us. So uh, they must, like, sit and tell us, like, you know, your brother is older. He wants this and this. You just like bear. You you can't have it right now, and you know explaining and talking it out helps a lot. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. The same way. Yes, you have a comment. No <laughs> comment. No comment. You agree. 
I yes. agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I think there should be dialogues in families. Mm -hmm. Parents sit with their kids. Yes, like, let me give an example of me. At home, we have, most of the times, we sit and discuss. Okay. You know, parents, kids, dialogues. We see, discuss, we see problems that are in our families. So, when 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 your parent tells you most important things that you need in your life, you don't have to actually base on your uh, uh, conflicts between you and your siblings. You should find a way, like grown-up kids, you should find a way to solve those problems. Yeah, like most of the times, when kids grow and they had that kind of conflict or misunderstanding when they grow they start like loving each other caring for each other yeah. that's it having dialogues in families okay uh those are not my words they are their words and that's actually what we want in the young sam maritan program we want these young people to speak up for themselves and i hope parents are watching and they have had okay. they need a dialogue right yes we need a dialogue isn't yeah. it yes oh thank you for a good uh, dialogue how was the dialogue that was great Lang out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 same 10 out of 10 okay what is your message to the young girls or young boys uh, there Try to understand what the parents tells you because what he or she tells you has, has an effect on you and has might help you in the future. Oh, thank you. Uh, did you tell me that you want to be a fashionist? Okay, thank you, Missy Fashionist. Hey, your message uh, to the young boys or girls out there? So my message to my, t my teenagers, my peer, is that, um, yeah, try to understand your parents because their situation they may pass through that may affect you one way or another. So, if you're a teenager watching me, uh, better understand your parents and if you, f you feel something is wrong and you don't agree with them, just sit with them, say, mom, dad, you know, I feel it should be going this way, but if you feel you don't agree with this, help me find a solution for this problem. Okay. And it will be better. Thank you. The question goes to you. Yeah, um, what I can tell to my fellow teenagers, uh, you know, not everything can be solved by Quivum, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have you sometimes have to go easy and try to understand. Put uh, yourself in your parents' shoes. What would you do if you were a parent? You know, sometimes when we do that things, our parents are hard, but we all know they're doing it for our own good. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, facilitator. May God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, uh, Ameri. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Gayer. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Tonya. Welcome. Okay, and uh, from the bottom of, of my heart, I want to thank you, the Bible Society of Rwanda, uh, for this good initiative. Mr. Emmanuel, if you want that uh, this program continue, you're going to uh, take your book. Take it, please. And then say, I'm going to be a young Samaritan. I'm going to be, be a young Samaritan. Samaritan. Okay, thank you for choosing to be a good Samaritan. Hey, we are from glory to glory. Do you like to dance? Do you like no. to dance? Oh, you, you've told me that you want to be a singer? Oh, okay. Yes. Do you like to dance? You like it. Okay, in the control room, Mr. Eric, please play a song called Big God. Can I teach you one dance? Yeah, sure. Sure? Yes. And you will teach me? No. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eric, please play. Play the song. 
Oh, this is my favorite song. One time, one time, say! Okay. <laughs> okay, please play the song. Okay, teach us something to dance. <laughs> teach us something to dance. One time, one One time, one time, say. Can I sit? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you must say, Okay, teach us something. No, <laughs> repeat. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you must say, come on. Okay, I'm gonna teach you. Do this. Like this. Like this. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay, <ka. laughs> Okay, thank you. May God bless you, Mr. Facilitator. And this please, uh, can you play for us? Yes, yeah, sure. And all uh, all the youth out there. Yeah, yeah sure. Let's humble ourselves as we pray. <clears throat> Father Almighty, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this glorious time you have given us, Father King of Glory. Thank you for protecting these young Samaritans you created, Father King of Glory. Thank you for enlarging this program among young people. Uh, let it be a changing point for the many King of Glory. Mighty, let it be a blessing to our country, Rwanda, and even outside. Father, we pray that this is not the end, but the beginning that will go far, Father King of Glory. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega, Father. As you've been the Alpha in the beginning today, may you continue with us until when this program makes an impact. Bless these young ones, bless this young generation, Father, as they move, as they move this path of life. And let's have a good runner in the future and glorify your name. In your name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Before you say amen. Repeat again, amen. And we all say, Amen. amen.